Hey, what is up everyone? In this video, we're gonna do uh, unboxing and maybe a, a quick first impression of a LCD monitor um, sold in Costco by LG. This is their gaming series of monitors, uh, 32 inch, so pretty large screen, 1080p, um, NVIDIA G-Sync compatible uh, gaming monitor. And uh, what's special about this 32 inch monitor is that it is G-Sync compatible. So if you have a NVIDIA graphic card, um, the refresh rate can be syn synchronized um, to the framing rate of your graphic card and also 165 Hertz super fast refresh rate ensures a much more smooth uh, gaming experience. So I found this in Costco yesterday and uh, today I actually went there again, just grabbed the last piece available because I want to give this monitor a test. Um, if you guys check out the link on the top right corner, I actually did a review of a, another LG IPS panel that sold in Costco probably a few months ago. I bought it because my very old IPS panel monitor broke. This one, it is not an IPS panel. It is a VA panel, which is like a hybrid between the IPS panel and a TN panel. So uh, it's able to go with a faster refresh rate. Uh, however, its viewing angle is slightly less than IPS panel, but the uh, viewing angle is actually better than a TM panel. That's why it's like uh, in between. It's like a compromise between the two panels and it combines some of the good things in between those, in between the IPS and the TM panel. Um, so a couple interesting thing, I think I've already mentioned, it's got 165 Hertz refresh rate, one millisecond motion blur reduction. Uh, this is pretty much marketing gimmick. So take it as a grain of salt, G-Sync compatible, which means it actually has a NVIDIA G-Sync chip built inside the monitor, which is why this monitor is slightly more expensive compared to some other monitors in this, um, in this price range because the G-Sync chip actually costs more money. HDR10 compatible, HDR is like means high dynamic range. So if you have a compatible graphic card, uh, it's able to display um, highlights and the shadow details. It's able to bring the highlight and shadow details out compared to some other monitors that's not HDR compatible, which is pretty much at this point also a gimmick and marketing um, thing. Um, 1080p full HD, again, it's, uh, it's not, you know, the most highest resolution monitor you can find. 1080p is actually, by today's standards, pretty low resolution. However, for gaming purpose, 1080p is actually perfect and uh, multiple inputs. It's got the Display Pro inputs, uh, two HDMI inputs, and a, uh, it looks like an optic um, audio input as well if you guys want to connect a sound card directly to the monitor. Uh, wall mount compatible, so I guess it's probably got a Visa mount, uh, probably 10 by 10. Let's just open up the monitor and take a look and see what is inside there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, open up the monitor and then we're gonna take a look at the contents. Then we're just gonna compare it with my existing uh, LG 27 inch IPS panel monitor. You got your usual accessories and mounting, uh, mounting stuff. A base plate, which is made mostly plastic. And this is uh, again for the mounting of the base plate. So we're gonna Open this up and take a look. The monitor 
it's uh, it's gigantic. Granted, it's 1080p. It's still very very large. Okay. All right here. I'm gonna try to remove everything, and then we're gonna uh, just assemble this monitor really quick, and then we're gonna take a look. It's not very heavy, so I can just grab it with one hand. Um, you know, put it on the side. I'm gonna remove the box. So obviously we want to uh, get the monitor set up upright, like upright first. It's, uh, it comes with a, oh, it comes with a Display Pro cable. So it didn't come with a HDMI cable. So make sure, make sure you have a Display Pro port. And if you have an HDMI port, make sure you have a cable ready. Okay. So that's one thing totally caught me by surprise. Good thing I already have an HDMI cable I can use, but for you guys that does not have an HDMI cable, make sure you get one and get ready for the installation. So the monitor uses one of those um, adapters as their power source. So which means it's a very low power consumption uh, when it comes to the uh, energy efficiency. So that is a good thing. You got your usual user manual and things. And we're just gonna go ahead and start uh, mounting the, uh, the base plate onto the monitor, okay? This is the plate, this is the base plate. It's plastic with a little red marking, usual, like usual gaming scheme. So I'm gonna just plug this neck into the base plate. And it looks like um, I can just screw it in here and secure it, which is nice. I don't have to use any tools. However, for the uh, for mounting the monitor onto the base plate, I probably need a screwdriver. So I'll be right back. All right, got a screwdriver, and uh, it's got two screws that you use to mount the monitor onto the back of the neck. Okay, so we're gonna take it out and start aligning the monitor and get it mounted. So I would say I would just lay the monitor actually flat on the table. It's actually probably an easier way, like so. And probably better to put the thing on the edge so the stand could be mounted this way. Pretty straightforward, so no complaints there. And the stand, unfortunately, is not height adjustable nor angle adjustable. It's just a very basic stand with probably a limited amount of tilt adjustment. Here we go. So this is the monitor fully installed. The tilt adjustment is also very limited, okay? So the entire monitor actually feels very plasticky. If I just push this a little bit, you can see this thing is just like wobbling like crazy. So in terms of build quality, I, I can't really comment too much. It's, uh, it feels cheap, okay? So I've had other more expensive gaming monitors before, and this one is definitely on the cheaper side. So if you have a, so look at the back, it's got, um, let's see the back. It's got a Display Pro port on the top, two HDMIs and a, a D, oh, that's AC adapter, um, a headphone jack. So there is really not a uh, optical audio cable input. It's just a regular headphone jack for if you want to uh, connect a gaming headphone over here. It doesn't even have a microphone jack. So it, it's like you can't use a headset, you can only use a headphone. 
And if you use, if you need to use a microphone for for gaming for like uh, you know intercom, you have to connect your microphone separately onto your computer, which I think is a hassle as well. Um, the back of the panel, interesting design with a heat sink or like uh, the heat vent in a red like redial shape over here. Um, and again, the, the whole thing just feels cheap, but I'm not complaining because this monitor 32 inch with a G-Sync chip in it for only $230, okay? Um, so to adjust the monitor, there's a little joystick, which is a pretty standard for most of the LG monitors nowadays. The joystick is on the bottom of the monitor and you can just move it around to adjust, which is very, very simple and easy to do. Next, let's uh, connect this onto, the, uh, onto my machine and then I'm gonna give it a try and then let you guys know what I think about the monitor and whether it's got a real 165 hertz sync rate. Okay, so let's get started to the next section of the video. So as you guys can see, I have uh, just set up the monitor um, as my main display in the center over here. Let's move the camera just a little bit. Um, and right now I'm doing color calibration. So the monitor, the brightness has been turned down to about 130 lumens, which matches my other LG monitor on the right side. And uh, right off the bat, I can already tell you the refresh rate of 165 Hertz is amazing. When I move the mouse around, the mouse movement is super, super smooth, okay? So if you're a gamer, you're gonna really love this monitor. Uh, paired with a more powerful graphic card, I think it's gonna make your gaming experience just so much more smoother, okay? And as far as the VA panel versus the IPS panel, honestly, this VA panel is actually excellent. I do not notice uh, much of a significant like color shifts while, while I'm trying to look slightly off the monitor. But granted, it's my main monitor, so I'm mainly just gonna be looking straight ahead. And uh, so there is, like if you ask me, yes, there is a slight color shift if you just look off the angle. However, if you just, this is your main monitor, it doesn't really matter that much, okay? So like, um, I'm almost gonna be finished with color calibration, and once it's done, it should work just as good as my IPS panel LG monitor on the other side. The added benefit of G-Sync uh, is already apparent. When I go into my uh, graphic card setup, it already automatically detected this monitor as being G-Sync compatible and already enabled the G-Sync. So I'm really interested to find out my gaming experience in Overwatch to see how well this performs compared to my regular 75 Hertz uh, game, uh, I think they also say this is a gaming monitor, but however, with the refresh rate of this one, it totally just um, you know destroys a 75 hertz monitor because it's just so much, so much more smoother. Okay, so I guess the advantage of the 32 inch uh, uh, LG, uh, I think they call this what Ultra Gear gaming monitor, is really the G Sync and the super high refresh rate, 165 hertz and it's a native refresh rate, I can confirm that. Um, so really unbeatable at this price range, okay? Uh, I think if you go outside of Costco and you want to buy a 165 Hertz gaming monitor, at this price range, you can probably only find TN panels, which are like really crappy panels, okay? Um, so yeah, again, next section, I'm gonna play some games and I'm gonna let you guys know what I think uh, in a final conclusion on the LG 32 inch 165 Hertz uh, G-Sync compatible gaming monitor. All right, see you in the next section. So the monitor right now is um, measuring the patches to ensure a accurate color. And uh, once it's done, we are going to uh, play a few video games and uh, we're gonna load up a few pictures and just compare to see if there's any difference uh, between the VA panel and the IPS panel. But right off the bat, if you guys look at the screen, really the color shift is uh, is very bearable. If you look at the center, 
there is essentially no weird color shifting at all visually it might pick up some in the video camera but visually uh, I don't see any difference so we just finished the calibration I want to show you guys some of the data from the calibration results okay so this is the actual coverage it covers 98.7 percent sRGB 76.4 percent Adobe RGB and 80% DCI-P3, which is like a video format. So pretty much it's a standard sRGB monitor. If you look at the volume, it, even though it only covers a percentage of the sRGB uh, gamut, it actually, in terms of the volume, it actually covers more of the sRGB color spectrum, okay? And uh, so if we look over here at the calibration curve, you can see the monitor actually performed pretty good, okay? So with the curve adjusted, you can see there's only a minimal amount of curve, like adjustments to get it into, um, I guess, a calibrated state. So that's a calibration curve. If we, we look at the tonal response curve, there's a slight edge bump at the lower lumens, but um, again, with the adjustment, it's the monitor actually performs pretty accurately in terms of color response. And at the very end, we're gonna look at the color gamut. And so the dotted line in here is the um, actual sRGB. Um, and the color over here is the sRGB volume coverage of this monitor. So as you can see, this monitor actually displays more of the red color, more of the green color, and slightly less of the blue uh, magenta color over here. So in terms of coverage, it's actually doing an excellent job. And after calibration, the Delta E average is 0 0.27, which means it actually performs fantastically, with a maximum of uh, still below zero of 0 0.97. So again, this monitor after calibration is, is a very decent monitor for you know general purpose use for color um, graphic design as well as video editing. So um, again, with calibration, this monitor is already performing excellent, all right? So I also calibrated the 27 inch LG uh, IPS panel monitor that I had before. And this is the calibration results. As you can see, the Delta E average is 0 0.26, also not too bad. The maximum is 1.65, which is actually higher than the 32-inch uh, uh, VM panel. And uh, the gamut co coverage is 88.8% .8 sRGB, 64.4% Adobe RGB, and 67.5% DCI-P3. Um, so this coverage is actually, the IPS panel's coverage is actually slightly less than the, uh, the VM panel. Uh, which is interesting. Uh, so let's actually install the profile. Let's see. So I'm going to show the profile information over here. And we're going to take a quick look. So for this monitor, for the IPS panel, it also displays slightly more red color, slightly more of a green-yellow color, and just about enough of the blue color to cover the sRGB spectrum. Um, the gamut, that's a gamut. So tonal response, as you can see over here, this curve, like over here, there's a little more things going on, like somewhere around here. And then the rest of the curve looks fine for the, for the tone response. And this is the calibration curve. So, um, all in all, I would say both monitors perform uh, perfectly fine when they are fully calibrated. So I'm going to install this profile really quick. And again, with all the monitors, it's best to do the calibration once you get it. Uh, so to ensure the most accurate color when you are doing, you know, color critical applications. Uh, so we've, we've finished with the color calibration for both monitors. Let me just uh, show you guys the color difference. There really isn't much. There's a slight color variation 
between those two monitors. So this is the uh, the 32 inch, and this is the 27 inch I had before. Um, the most significant change that I can see really is the it's how smooth the 165 hertz is, especially when I'm moving my mouse around, and it's it's like buttery smooth. Um, so over here we have the uh, the LCD test screen that I used to test the old monitor, which I'm going to use to test for the new one as well. Check out the tonal response. So this is the gradient, which after calibration, of course, it, it, it doesn't have any issues displaying the gradient. Um, this is uh, the clock and face test. So, I mean, all those really doesn't matter much. Uh, I think what people most are curious about is, let's see, the black level. So it's still distinguishable between the one and the two and the three visually. So it, black level is also fine after calibration. The white level, so with the 254, this is where it gets a little tricky because the 254 for me visually is barely noticeable. Okay, let's put it over here. And again, 254, barely noticeable. So those monitors are actually very close in terms of performance and the gradient. So I can see some bending over here with the 32 inch VN panel, the VA panel. And over here on the IPS panel, the bending is actually uh, much less. It's much, much more smooth on the IPS panel. So in terms of bending, yeah, it's definitely a lot more visible like around this gray area, as you can see, compared to the IPS panel 27 inch LG where there is no visible bending. Um, visually, if you see it on the screen, then it might be the video encoding, but uh, I'm telling you that there is more visible bending on the 30, 32 inch LG than the 27 inch LG monitor. So that's the difference between the VA panel and the IPS panel. The inversion, this really doesn't matter much. Um, so in terms of viewing angle, this is what gets interesting. Let's, let's see the viewing angle. So right now I'm, I'm looking at the monitor like straight on. If I go to the sideways, as you can see, that area have more of the reddish color cast. And if I look over here, same thing, but you really have to like turn quite a lot to see that color cast. And over here, uh, same thing. If I, you know, really go off angle, the red, reddish color just shows up. If I go down, not as much. So that's the 32 inch. Let's take a look at the 27 inch side by side. So I'm gonna move this uh, over here. So take a look at the 27 inch. So let's tilt the angle a little bit. So as you can see, the performance of the viewing angle is, is better on the IPS for sure. However, no ordinary person is gonna look at the monitor at this kind of extreme angle. So in terms of usableness, both of the monitors to me are you know pretty much the same. Uh, the viewing angle also from the top is slightly better than the VM panel on the 27 inch LG. So yeah. Um, but the reason you buy the 32 inch gaming monitor with 165 Hertz, uh, display refresh rate with G-Sync is for its super buttery, smooth, fluid moving motion. Okay. And I actually chose a, uh, like really vibrant colored wallpaper as background. And as you can see, both monitors actually performs really, really nicely, both LG monitors. And so in terms of, you know, color, um, they both are pretty accurate after calibration. And the advantage of going with the 32 inch gaming monitor is for its G-Sync comp compatibility, as well as the crazy fast 165 Hertz refresh rate. That refresh rate is buttery smooth, man. I'm telling you, go buy it, try it. you never want to go back to any monitor that have less refresh rate. Unfortunately, 
the slight downside is that it's a VA panel. And I think at current technology limitations, only VA panels and TN panels are able to get to this high of a refresh rate. Kudos to LG though, for them to make the IPS panel on the 27 inch to go as high as 75 Hertz, which is already higher than 60 Hertz, uh, which, you know, slightly improves your gaming performance and the gaming experience. But the 32 inch from LG is just unbeatable. Okay. So in the next section, I'm just going to show you guys uh, a few footages of me playing the Overwatch and with the video recording, unfortunately, the recording is limited at 30 frames per second. So even though the monitor is displaying 165 hertz, um, it's not going to show as good, you know, on the on the video replay as you actually personally experience it, experiencing it while you're playing the games. But regardless, you'll probably get a sense of how smooth the movement is on the 165 hertz 32 inch LG compared to the um, the 75 hertz 27 inch uh, IPS panel that I had before, okay? All right, guys, so in this uh, section, I am just gonna play a little bit of my favorite game, which is Overwatch, and you guys can take a look and see how smooth the graphic is. And um, like the, the fluid, the dynamic motion of anything, anything that moves just feels so much more smooth. And if you look over here in my video configuration, um, I have set my limitation of the frames per second to 165, which is my display rate. Um, and also this monitor supports G-Sync. So even if I just set it to the maximum, the G-Sync would work its magic and somehow work with the display rate and still be able to display a much, much faster frame rate during gameplay. So, but for me personally, I like to set my frame rate cap at the display rate. So, which is 165, which is uh, almost like more than double the amount of my old monitor over here, which is crazy, okay? So, I'm just gonna hit play and we're gonna just play a few games. Um, and you guys can see just how fluid, how dynamic the motion is during gameplay. Like, uh, it's almost uh, felt immediately, like when you start using this monitor, just because how fluid the motion is with the mouse movement, okay? Like, on, on my old monitor, this would still be jittery while I'm moving around because the frame rate was capped, and right now, it's smooth as butter, okay? So um, if you guys ask me whether it's worth it to buy this 32 inch LG gaming monitor, even though it's a VA panel, and uh, my answer to you guys is it really depends, but by default, I would say, hell yeah, go for it. Uh, it's only $230, uh, which it's, you cannot find any better deal after outside of Costco. This is like the best price for a G-Sync compatible 1080p 32 inch monitor, okay? And this also helps to, uh, during gameplay, to make the movement, the aiming, uh, a lot more smooth. Uh, I know even though right now my ranking is not as good, I'm like somewhere in gold going plat, um, but this definitely makes gaming experience just a lot more fun. And again, the game is running at full 165 frames per second because of the... Um, of the 1080 uh, GTX 1080 Ti graphic card. That card still powers any gaming 1080p at maximum frame rate without any issues, okay? So, um, again, really, really smooth, as you guys can see, okay? My gameplay is, is not as good. I'm not as of a good player. However, I enjoy a nice game, so. Back up to get healed, and then I need to go out. 
Grace was behind us on the second floor. Grace was behind us on the door. Right side, right side, right side, right side, right side. All right, so one round of gameplay, uh, pretty smooth, uh, no complaint. Not sure if, <laughs> if you got the view because Sesame was here, but uh, yeah, really smooth gameplay. Okay guys, so uh, this concludes um, today's unboxing and first impression of the LG Ultra Gear 165Hz gaming monitor. And uh, this is a 32 inch monitor, 1080p. The main selling point of this monitor is 165 hertz refreshing rate, native refreshing rate, which is quite amazing. And also the NVIDIA G-Sync capability. If you have a NVIDIA graphic card, uh, that is like godsend for uh, gameplay, especially paired with the ultra fast refreshing rate. While I was playing Overwatch compared to my old monitor, which is the LG, another LG IPS monitor, the refreshing rate on the old one was 75 hertz, which is slightly better than the native of the 60 hertz monitor, which is currently available on the market. However, the 165 hertz is it's more than two times as fast, so it's definitely like super buttery smooth when I was playing Overwatch. The movement of the mouse, it's you 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 have to try it 
to get a sense of how good, how amazing the 165 hertz refreshing rate is. Um, given the monitor spec, it is a VA panel, not an IPS panel, but as evident on my previous, uh, in the previous section of this video, the, it actually gives a very decent range of colors when it comes to um, sRGB standards. So I calibrated both monitors and I compared both monitors. Actually, the, uh, the new LG 32 inch gives a slightly better Delta E in terms of color stability um, compared to my old 27 inch IPS panel, which was quite surprising. The only downside, or maybe the slight downside, is the viewing angle is just slightly worse. However, I'm using it straight on, so it really doesn't matter to me because when you watch both monitors straight on, there is really no difference. Like, they just both look as good, and the color is just as accurate um, in terms of the VA panel and the IPS panel. Um, so if you ask me, would I buy the uh, the the 32 inch gaming monitor again, given the chance, for sure. Like the 165 hertz refreshing rate, really like if you play video games, this has to be experienced uh, for you to understand how good and how buttery smooth the refreshing rate is when you're doing any kind of gameplay. And it also helps with editing um, in the Photoshop as well as the Premiere uh, when I was doing graphic editing as well because um, with the very smooth movement of the mouse, uh, those uh, adjustment sliders also become ultra smooth when I'm trying to adjust for color, contrast, and other color balancing issues on the sliding, the color sliding bar. So that's also an added bonus with the ultra smooth uh, refreshing rate on the 32 inch, the LG monitor. And for $230, really you cannot go wrong with this monitor. Uh, if you don't really need the 4K capability or the 4K ultra high resolution. I, I've been using, I, I've had a 2K monitor before and I've had a 4K monitor before, both of which I find actually just the pixel are just way too compact uh, on, a, on a small real estate uh, on such a, like, like a 27 inch, like even for a 32 inch, I think 4K is still just too compact of a pixel density. The 1080p, it's, it's bearable for me personally, but if you really need 4K, then you really have to look elsewhere on a uh, much more expensive monitor, okay? And uh, so that concludes today's video review. Um, so again, this is the LG Ultra Gear model number 32 gn 50 t 32 inch gaming monitor. And it's not only great for gaming, it's also great for graphic editing and video editing as well. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if you're interested in the review of the other LG IPS monitor that's also for sale in Costco, uh, feel free to check out the uh, review on the top right corner of this video as well. And I'll post a link up there. Um, so once again, if you found this video helpful, hit the like button and subscribe and I should have more similar contents coming out for you guys, okay? So thanks again and see you in the next video. Take care.